It's day 500 of Russia's war in Ukraine. The battle lines have moved up and down in this period, but neither side has given up. As we speak, President Zelensky is on the road. He visited Bulgaria first, the Czech Republic second, and now he's heading to Turkey. All three countries are NATO members. This is Zelensky's first trip to Turkey since the invasion began. It promises to be a crucial one. Zelensky will be looking for two things in Istanbul. One is President Erdogan's support to join NATO. The Turkish president has become the Grinch of NATO expansion. He threatened to stall Finland. He is still stalling Sweden. So Zelensky wants to secure his support. And objective number two, extending the Black Sea grain deal. The United Nations had mediated this deal between Russia and Ukraine. Turkey played a key role in that. Under this deal, grain trade by the Black Sea resumed despite the war. But on the 17th of July, this month, the deal will expire. So Zelensky needs Erdogan's support to extend the deal. The hope is that Turkey can convince Russia. Now, you may have noticed that Zelensky is traveling a lot nowadays, a lot more. He even flew all the way to Washington, sure. D.C. The question is why? Because war fatigue has set in. Zelensky needs more advanced weapons to take the fight to Russia. But for that, he needs Western support. He needs clear signals from NATO. That's what he demanded during his meetings in Prague. Some honesty from the alliance. Listen to this. Some people will look back at Moscow. Some people are afraid of Russia. Although I believe that this is a great moment, a great chance to show the courage of the entire alliance and the strength of the alliance. But nevertheless, we are talking about a clear signal, some concrete things in the direction of an invitation. We need this motivation. We need honesty in our relations. NATO leaders will be meeting in Lithuania next week. It's Finland's first summit. Zelensky could end up getting an invitation, but will his country get one? I'm talking about NATO membership. Ukraine has been fighting for 500 days for the right to join NATO, but the alliance has been non-committal. It says a country at war cannot be given membership, which is why Zelensky is on the road to drum up support for his cause. A lot depends on what the United States decides to do. Publicly, Joe Biden has been confident. He may have confused Everybody Ukraine for Iraq, but his statement was quite clear. Putin should lose, that's what he said. But behind the scenes, there have been some interesting developments. Some back-channel diplomacy. Look at these reports. They say former U.S. officials have been holding secret talks with Russia. For what? To somehow try and end the war. Now, the details are sketchy. But here's what we know. The U.S. was represented by former White House and State Department officials. And Russia? By people close to the Kremlin. In one instance, even Sergei Lavrov represented Russia. The foreign minister met a group of former U.S. officials in April. And what is the White House saying about this? They're using typical diplomatic language. We knew about it, but we did not clear it. In other words, we didn't start it, but we do not mind it either. Perhaps it's true. But let me tell you what Joe Biden has decided to approve. Cluster bombs. The U.S. is preparing a new package of weapons for Ukraine. For the first time, it will include cluster bombs. And this is a controversial weapon. Many countries, including the U.S., are phasing it out. The reason? It's too dangerous and unreliable. Cluster bombs contain hundreds of smaller bombs inside. They don't hit one target. They carpet bomb the whole place. So there are more chances of civilian casualties, plus most of them never go off. Around 10 to 40 percent of cluster bombs fail. But years or decades later, they may explode in civilian areas. Even today, cluster bombs from the 1960s explode in Vietnam and Laos. Now, Ukraine and Russia have both used cluster bombs. Kiev first got them from Turkey. But this is the first time that Washington, D.C. is providing them. And what does that mean? Is the U.S. desperate or do they sense a window? Either way, it's not an encouraging sign. On Thursday, a Russian missile struck Ukraine's Lviv city. Around 10 people were killed. Yet neither side is any closer to their objectives. Ukraine has no guarantees from the NATO and Russia is not any closer to Kiev. In fact, Zelensky is so confident he's traveling almost every month. After 500 days, war has sort of become routine, something you wake up to and do every day. It's a dangerous phase in any conflict.